Thanks for participating in the Equitable Development Around Transit Plan. Over the next few minutes, you'll hear a summary of the final recommendations of the study. After watching, please take a short survey to let us know what you think of the new plan. In November 2016, with the passage of a half-cent sales tax, Wake County voters funded the Wake County Transit Plan and set the stage for the largest transit expansion in Raleigh's history. A key component of the Wake County Transit Plan is a new service called Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT. With dedicated lanes, traffic signal priority, and other innovations, BRT will provide Raleigh and Wake County residents a new, frequent, and reliable transit service unlike anything in the region. Four BRT routes will connect the region. A western route into Cary, a southern route into Garner, an eastern route towards Nightdale, and a northern route. Fitting the BRT service into existing streets is design work that is ongoing with the goal of being fully operational by 2028. This work is the implementation of the Wake County Transit Plan itself. In addition to implementing the Wake County Transit Plan, the City of Raleigh has also conducted a study to explore how land development around the new BRT service should be guided. This study is called the Equitable Development Around Transit Plan. The Equitable Development Around Transit Plan set out to answer two main questions. First, what are Raleigh's goals for equity and housing affordability around the BRT service? When asked if it is important to ensure affordable housing options exist near BRT, 84% of participants in the study agreed. When asked, do you support taller buildings if they provide more affordable housing? 72% said yes. Is it important that Raleigh allow more people to live in walkable places near transit? Even if that means duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes are permitted in residential areas near BRT? 85% of participants said yes. The second main question of the equitable development around transit plan was, how much of Raleigh's future growth should be accommodated near BRT? 2% of participants of the study chose the don't change scenario. 23% chose a moderate transit support scenario. 75% of participants in the equitable development around transit study selected the grow around transit high density scenario. These goals will advance the community preference for equity and growth. The next few slides will walk through these goals and the specific tools that will advance them. Enhance affordability and minimize displacement. Affordable housing is defined as housing that can be reasonably afforded by households with an income of 80% of the area's median. This plan puts a focus on deeper affordability with a goal of ensuring a substantial portion of units along the corridors are available to households making 50% or even 30% of the area's median income. Preserve existing businesses. Small businesses create opportunity and community identity. Generate job opportunities. A core benefit of transit is in connecting people to jobs. Guarantee pedestrian safety. Transit usage depends on safe and comfortable streets for people walking and biking. No transit rider should be exposed to streets that are unsafe because they are designed for cars first. Grow around transit. This is a strategy not only for environmental benefits and transit ridership, but for addressing equity and affordability. More jobs and housing near transit means more opportunity for transit riders. Finally, ongoing input and measuring results. This will help ensure that the community's goals for equity and growth are met. To achieve these goals, the following is recommended. New types of zoning can change the physical development of the city and help achieve the goals of the plan. Many cities across the country have updated their zoning to encourage the development of more affordable housing, more mixed use, and more high-density developments in transit-rich areas. 
The equitable development around transit plan recommends doing the same in Raleigh. This can be accomplished by using what's called a transit oriented development overlay zone or a TOD overlay. TOD zoning would provide an affordability bonus by allowing taller buildings to be built so long as affordable housing units are included in those buildings. It would also provide an employment bonus by allowing taller buildings to be built if they were job generating non-residential uses. This is an example of how a bonus could be applied. TOD zoning would also require that larger sidewalks be built, new buildings be built closer to the streets, and all parking requirements be removed. This type of zoning would encourage walkability and transit ridership. Another new zone called the TOD residential zone would allow townhouses, duplexes, and small apartment buildings where they are currently prohibited. This type of housing is generally more affordable than detached single family housing. This is because the high cost of real estate is spread among multiple owners or multiple renters. Financing and affordable housing production tools will help achieve the goals of the plan. The recommended equity fund will provide an ongoing source of funding to invest in community benefits like affordable housing. The equity fund will tie community benefits directly to new development in the corridor. This is how it works. Additional tax revenue generated from new development above the current day property values will be set aside in the annual budget. This new revenue will then be reinvested in the areas where the development took place. This means that as property values increase due to private development, funding for community benefits will also increase. The intended result of the equity fund is to harness the financial gain of private development and directly reinvest that gain in the community for affordable housing. A comprehensive set of equity programs will also help to advance the goals of the plan. Homeowner rehabilitation assistance, anti-predatory purchase education, tenant legal assistance, local worker participation in BRT construction, assistance with home ownership costs, housing priority for current and former residents, small business retention programs, and youth skills apprenticeship programs will all be used to provide community benefits for the current and future residents of the BRT corridors. Thanks for watching, and please take the short survey to let us know how well you think the recommended tools achieve the goals outlined in the plan.